Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red Omega for episode 38 of the playthrough. Here we are just outside of the Pokemon League yet again, and I think we are finally, after all this time, we are finally ready to not only defeat the Elite Four, but defeat the Pokemon League champion and essentially beat the game. Now, of course, here in Fire Red, there's a lot more to the game after the Pokemon League, but I think for a lot of people, defeating the Pokemon League and becoming the Pokemon League champion is the ultimate goal of the game, right? And in the past two episodes, we have come up short, and that's why I'm sitting here outside of the Pokemon League, just basically walking in circles. I have spent so much time researching this and practicing this to make sure we can actually defeat the Pokemon League and ladies and gentlemen I'm very happy to say that we are going to beat them here today. I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever barring some sort of a crazy crazy fiasco where maybe a golem misses two rock slides in a row or something like that, we should be able to beat them here in today's episode. And the reason why I am so confident is because I took some advice that you guys gave me in the previous episode. You guys told me, Nero, you need to have items, this is the Pokemon League, and you also need to level up your Pokemon just a little bit. But the downside to that, right, is there's always this balance I'm trying to strike. I don't want my Pokemon to be overleveled, because if I overlevel my Pokemon, we're going to blitz right through the Pokemon League, it's not going to be a challenge, it's not going be fun for me to play or fun for you guys to watch so I had to decide where did I want to have my Pokemon for this run and I decided to go with level 63 and the reason why I chose 63 is because it's pretty much in line with the majority of the Elite Four Pokemon but we're still going to be relatively under leveled for Lance as well as Gary and also level 63 was the level that Starmie was at the end of the last episode and if you guys caught the previous couple of episodes then you know that Starmie has really been carrying our team throughout the Elite Four. So I decided to get every Pokemon up to about Starmie's level and now my team is much more balanced We can actually go ahead and swap my Pokemon in and out and have every single Pokemon play a role in this run of the Elite Four And I'm pretty excited about that I also decided to get a couple of items and change up what, I, what items are being held by what different Pokemon. So what I decided to do here is I went back to Vermilion City. For those who don't know, if you go back to Vermilion City and then head east, there's going to be this building. And inside of that building, you're going to find one of Professor Oak's aides. And if you talk to him and you have 30 Kanto region Pokemon, he will give you the item finder, which can be used to find hidden items on the ground. Now, if you guys don't know, you can go to where Snorlax was, both over there on the bridge next to Lavender Town, as well as over by Cell. On City, and you can use the item finder right there in that exact spot, and you will find a leftovers in each one of those spots. Which, for those who don't know, leftovers is a held item that restores 1 16th of the Pokemon's max HP at the end of each turn. I gave my two leftovers one to Electabuzz because I feel as Electabuzz needs to be a bit bulkier, and I gave the other one to Golem because Golem has a lot of hit points, and 1 16th is going to benefit somebody with a lot of hit points as compared to somebody that doesn't have a lot of hit points, right? And it's not going to make the biggest difference in the world to be perfectly honest, but neither one of these Pokemon really had an item to speak of in the previous couple of runs, and now they have leftovers. I also decided to give the Quick Claw to Typhlosion instead of Dragonite, and I believe that's it. We still have the Soothe Bell on Tauros, because I don't know how this works. If you guys can answer this for me down there in the comments, you guys have been so good about this so far throughout the entirety of this series, but Tauros, we need to have him at maximum happiness for his return attack to actually be good, right? And so as a result, I did not want to take away the Soothe Bell, which increases his happiness, because I was worried that if I take it away from him, it's going to drop him below maximum happiness. But would he still be at max happiness without it? I really have no idea, but regardless, I decided to keep the Soothe Bell on him. And one final thing here, Golem ended up learning... Oh, wow, we ex actually exited out of there. Golem ended up learning a brand new move while I was getting him up to level 63. So that new move is going to be Double Edge. And the reason why I chose Double Edge over the move he had previously, which was Counter, is because counter really just was not helpful in the vast majority of situations. There were so many spots where, like, counter just wasn't even a factor whatsoever, whereas double edge, it's a very powerful physical attack. It's a normal move, so he doesn't get stab bonus, but still, if he finds himself in a situation where he can't use his ground moves for one reason or another, maybe they're a flying type, maybe they have levitate or what have you, and if his rock moves can't be effective either, he now has another option in the form of double edge, whereas beforehand, counter really wasn't all that good. So, with that all out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, I like to always keep you guys up to date with what's happening off screen. I believe we are finally ready to take on the Elite Four, defeat the Elite Four, and then of course defeat the Pokemon League Champion. Now as we go into the first battle here, I have one thing to confess to you guys. I already recorded this episode. Yesterday, in fact. It was last night. I recorded this episode, and things were going really well. I was developing all sorts of really fun strategies. We blitzed through the Elite Four, 
but I failed against the Pokemon League champion. And that was one of the most frustrating things that's happened to me in a very long time. Because, as you guys know, it takes me... Even though I, I really know what I'm doing, it takes me like 30 to 45 minutes, depending on weird outliers, to be able to get through the entire Elite Four and then go and take on the Pokemon League Champion, right? And so to have another episode, the third episode in a row, where I just go through and then fail at the Pokemon League Champion again, I was so frustrated by that. So what I did is I scrapped the entire recording. I rebooted the save, and then I just kept running through the Elite Four over and over and over until I eventually got up there, right? And for the longest time, it took me like seven or eight tries. For the longest time, I thought there's no way I can actually beat the Pokemon League Champion with all my Pokemon only being level 63. Like, it just, it did not seem possible to me. I didn't think I could actually do it, but I figured out a way. I figured out a way, and I'll tell you, I'm not even going to tell you how I figured out how to do it. We are not going to be leveling our Pokemon any higher than this. There's going to be no real, I, I guess there's sort of a trick involved, but it involves leveling up one of my Pokemon. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys how I figured this out, exactly what I need to do, but it's going to be pretty cool. But like I said, I have run through the Elite Four here. <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times now in a row, and so as a result... I pretty much have this entire Elite Four battle down to a science. I know every move. There are still a couple of outliers. There are still going to be a couple of outliers that are going to be difficult for me to actually take out. But by and large, I pretty much know every move I need to do against the Elite Four. I know every matchup, every swap in they're going to end up making. Like, I practiced this so much because I really wanted to... Oh, also, I have a bunch of items. I, that's the one thing I forgot to mention. So, like I said, I took on that lady who has the Chanties and the Blizzies a bunch to level up all my Pokemon. And by doing that, I got a good amount of money. And with all that that money i bought some revives and moo moo milk uh, i got rid of the black belt from golem of course we have some ethers some full restore as well as a couple of full heal but um yeah so i have every move pretty much down to a science at this point like i know every turn i know every i know pretty much everything here which is going to be pretty cool i think so right here, Electabuzz is going to heal up just a little bit. Now, you may think Leftovers isn't that big of a deal, but watch right here. He restores 12 hit points for really no reason whatsoever, and those 12 hit points are going to be helpful. Beforehand, Electabuzz didn't even have an item. I actually did a bunch of research on, like, how can I best make this team even better, right? What can I possibly do to make this team better? It, uh, I'm looking up held items and stuff like that. I'm really just trying to figure out what I can possibly do to make this work for me. And um, one of those things I figured out was I need to get some better items. So then I found out about the Leftovers. I went and watched a tutorial online as to where you find leftovers and stuff like that. I also saw another really good item in the form of the... Oh, forgive me, guys. They have very similar names. I can't quite remember which one was which. There's a Choice Scarf and then Choice... No, I, th I think it's a Choice Band. I think Choice Scarf makes you go first, like, no matter what. But Choice Band, I think it is, will increase your physical attack by, like, 50% or something like that, which is really good. But once you use a physical move, you're locked into only using that move until either you faint, the battle ends, or you swap out, right? And so I'm like, oh, wow, that sounds really good. Can you imagine if I were to actually get one of those for, like, Golem and have him just earthquake through everybody, right? That'd be really freaking good. Or even um, even Dragon Knight, having it just go through an aerial ace, absolutely everything. That would be really cool, but I that's not in the game. <laughs> Apparently, it's a Gen 3 item. Apparently, it is in Pokemon um, Ruby and Sapphire. But it's not in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Now, it may actually be in this mod. I don't know. I mean, it could be. It could be in Fire Red Omega, but I couldn't find anything. I did some research. I couldn't find anything about it being here. So I had to make do with what I had. Um, the rest of the items, honestly, there's not a lot of great held items uh, in, in Pokemon Fire Red Omega. Oh, card key. Wow. <laughs> there's not a lot of great held items in... Pokemon Fire Red that I could find anyway. Like, you have your Mystic Waters and your uh, Charcoals and your stuff like that, which are items that increase your uh, Pokemon's kind of moves by, like, 10%. Like, Mystic Water increases the power of water moves by roughly 10%. Charcoal does the same thing for fire moves by, again, roughly 10%. And you can try to find those, but oftentimes they were actually pretty expensive. And, oh, this stinks. Mm, I think he's going to have, like, one hit point left here if he actually hits his double edge. 
Now, like I said, I have pretty much every single... Oh, my goodness. I have, like, every single one of these battles down to a science. But like I said, also, there's a couple of outliers. And Wigglytuff here is one of those freaking outliers. It is so frustrating to play against because all it does is CC stall you to freaking death and just bore us all to death, to be perfectly honest here. Like, it, it, it makes you fall in love with it, which then makes you... It's basically like being confused. Every move's like a freaking gamble. And then also puts you to sleep after that. And then the Crobat does the same thing. Hypno does the same thing. There are just so many Pokemon that do that. Oh, Ned drops a Parish Song on you, which is going to kill you in three turns. Oh, man. They CC you to absolute death, which is so frustrating. But we need Typhlosion to get a little bit of levels here. We need Typhlosion to actually take, uh, take out this Wigglytuff, because that is one of the keys, believe it or not, to us actually winning here today. So I would like to... Oh, of course, you're going to try... Ned drop... And that does protect... Like, it doesn't actually do... It's like... How many of you play Hearthstone? And how many of you played Hearthstone? Like, especially back when, like, the game first came out, right? Mages were the most annoying people to play against. They still are today, arguably. Of course, everyone's different. But for me personally, mages in that game were always the most annoying, oh my god, to actually play against. Because they never actually did anything. They would sit there with a full hand of cards, and their strategy was simply just to remove everything you put on the board. They have so much AoE and so much board clear and so much everything. They just do nothing for, like, the first 10 or 15 turns. Then they have, like, some kind of, like, a crazy one-turn kill combo with, like, Arc Mage. Antonitis or something annoying like that afterwards. Like, it's all they freaking do. And there's a lot of Pokemon here in the Elite Four that do the exact same thing. Like I said, here we go. Oh, Wigglytuff got to swap them out here because otherwise it's going to die. Ah, so frustrating, man. So absolutely frustrating. Um, oh, I, I didn't mean to hit run. What we can actually do here is just to really uh, save time, I suppose. We're going to go ahead and drop a Moo Moo Milk here on Electabuzz. It's unfortunate because Golem's probably going to go down here, but that's fine, honestly. I'm... Oh, it actually missed! That's hilarious! Okay, well, it's going to go fast. I bet... Oh, it's actually not! Wow, I thought Golem was going to have to take two turns in a row against himself there, but I guess not. I guess Lapras is actually going to take a hit. And that's fine, because uh, after he knocks out Golem, which we have plenty of revives, I'm not too worried about Golem going down, uh, we can just swap into Electabuzz, have Electabuzz kill Lapras, and then maybe, just maybe, Electabuzz can also take down that freaking annoying Wigglytuff. <laughs> that thing is so obnoxious. There there we go again, once with the leftovers, very nice. And Lapras also has leftovers. <laughs> That's okay, because we're just going to Volt Tackle it to death. I'm not even going to bother with the Thunderbolt right now, because I know Volt Tackle's not going to kill me, and I know it will kill Lapras without a shadow of a doubt. Don't have to worry about the Thunderbolt not doing slightly less damage or not enough damage or anything like that. We're all good to go in that respect. And how many hit points do Wigglytuff have left? Hey, level 64 Electabuzz. There we go. There we go. Now, how many points did this really annoying Pokemon have left? Ah, that's too much. That's way too much. I'm not going to be able to take it out with Electabuzz, but I'm okay with that, I suppose, because we can we can try. I actually think one. Th I think we lead here with a Thunderbolt, because Thunderbolt does less damage than uh, Volt Tackle. We lead with a Thunderbolt, which is going to do a decent amount of damage, and that should put him in a kill range for Volt Tackle to come in and finish him off. Okay, never mind. I guess that's just going to go ahead and do it, which is actually kind of annoying, because now she's going to go ahead and heal up her Wigglytuff. The only thing I don't like about leftovers is it kind of makes the game a little bit longer because you have all, everyone like using leftovers and stuff like that in between turns and stuff like that, which kind of slows things down. And then if you get other factors in there like hail or sandstorm or anything like that, that just also just have all these little things that are ticking in between turns, it makes the battles feel a lot longer than they actually are. Oh wow, so two Thunderbolts is all we really need. Even after she heals with her leftovers, we're going to be good to go here. So the first battle definitely did not go as well. Like I said, um, I pretty much know everything I need to do for every single one of these battles, but uh, there are some outliers, and, w and Wigglytuff here is one of those outliers, <laughs> which is frustrating. Crobat's another one. I'm trying to think of the of all of them in general. That Gyarados can be kind of annoying uh, against Lance. I don't think Bruno really has any whatsoever. Bruno, we kind of just blitz right through, but we're gonna we're gonna take on Bruno with a slightly different strategy this time around. Uh, so let's go ahead and heal up Electabuzz. Get him up there. We gotta get Gargar Boy Golem back. We also need to heal up Typhlosion as well here. 
Just make sure every Pokemon's healed up before every single battle. One thing I also learned, which is like super frustrating, is after you beat Lance, don't accidentally walk into the next room. Because if you do that, it immediately like takes control of your character and has you walk all the way up to the Pokemon League Champion, then it immediately starts the dialogue, therefore starting the battle. So if you didn't heal your Pokemon before then, you're screwed. <laughs> like you are absolutely screwed, which is super annoying if you're just like running through and trying to do practice runs and stuff like that. Because um, you get all the way through there and then suddenly you're like, wow, I made it all the way through. And I forgot to heal my Pokemon, and now that all that time was basically wasted. So, here we have Bruno. And the reason why we are leading with Typhlosion is, again, we need to level up Typhlosion at least one time here. Uh, this is, it took me like six or seven runs to realize that, but we have to level up Typhlosion, because believe it or not, Typhlosion is the key to us being able to beat the Pokemon League Champion. Which is actually really cool, because I remember I was like really against the idea of having Typhlosion on the team. He wasn't a Generation 1 Pokemon, but you guys overwhelmingly in the comments said, keep Typhlosion. I'm like, you know what? You guys are here, you, you stuck through every single episode with me, and you guys are awesome. You helped me out so much in the comments and every episode and everything, so uh, I'll do that. You guys want to have this Pokemon, we will have this Pokemon. And uh, it turns out that the Pokemon that you guys insisted I get is literally the key. Like, I could not. I absolutely could not. I've tested it countless times. I cannot beat the Pokemon League Champion without him. I just couldn't do it, and that's actually really cool to me. So what we did there is we had Typhlosion take out Steelix, because Steelix, of course, is Steel, and Steel's weak to fire. And uh, after that, they swap out to a Dorfan. Or Don I, always call him a, I always want to call him a Dorfan. Don Fan. And then we swap out to Starmie there, because to, therefore it's going to give half the... Um, Half of the XP to Typhlosion, which is nice. He's not going to level up here, but he will level up by the time we're all the way done through the Elite Four. And for the rest of the Bruno battle here, I like to just keep Starmie out. Because Starmie is just... <laughs> so freaking good! So good! Like, how many times in this series have I talked to you guys about how much... I just love the Water Pokemon in Generation 1. There are so many great ones to choose from. I could have went with Seal. Actually, I couldn't have, now that I think about it. That may actually knock out Starmie. Nope, it didn't. I could have gone with Seal, right? I could have gone um, with like a Tentacool and turned that into a Tentacruel. I could have... These are more obscure ones I don't think would make very good main Pokemon. But I could have gone with like uh, Goldeen and turned that into a Seedra. Goldeen into a Sea King or Horsey into a Seedra. Or even Poliwag, Poliwhirl, Poliwrath, right? There are so many choices to be perfectly honest. And I think we're going to use one of our full restores heal or here because I just... It seems like a waste. I get that, but... I'm worried about Polyrath knocking out Starmie. Why is it using Hydro Pump over literally any other move? <laughs> okay, either way, let's drop a Psychic on it. But yeah, I'm very happy I went with Starmie. I actually started looking up because I'm just, this entire series has like reinvigorated my love for the Pokemon franchise. And so I started looking up like builds and stuff like that, looking up uh, uh, guides on Smogan of, of what, what to teach different Pokemon, how to best to use different Pokemon. And according to that, I think in Gen 3, uh, Starmie is actually considered OU, which means overused, which means it's basically like one of the top tiers of Pokemon. It's like a top tier Pokemon back in Gen 3. I'm not sure if it is anymore because obviously a lot of Pokemon games have come out since then and a lot of Pokemon have come out since then but Starmie it's just so freaking good man I mean the, the water psychic typing alone is fantastic but then you can teach it things like ice beam which makes it even better then you have it have it have a little bit of survivability in the form of its recover it's really freaking good yes Polyrath you cannot oh my goodness of all the things that happen I was considering how he was saying Polyrath is one of those outlier Pokemon, which can be annoying because he doesn't die very quickly to Starmie because, of course, Psychic takes down most of his hit points, then he heals, then he probably heals again, you have to keep on using Psychic against him, and all the while he can confuse you and do other annoying things. But man, I didn't think he would be this annoying. I've always kind of wanted to have a po Yep, there comes another, another, another full restore. I think how the AI works is if you knock out... Because, again, I've tested this countless times. I think if you knock out all of their Pokemon basically in one hit, that will actually make it so they have all these other full restores that they're going to use later in the battle. So, like, maybe... I don't know how many, but let's say every trainer has, like, four full restores or something like that. And 
you knock out, you know, three its first three Pokemon, it's going to use those extra full restores on the final three Pokemon. I believe that's how it works. I could be wrong. But I think that, may, that maybe is how it works because I've seen... Um, I've seen this Polyrath get multiple full restores put on it before. I've seen Lance's Dragon Knight have multiple full restores put on it before. So, I think that's how it works. If you guys can answer that for me down there in the comment section below, that would be fantastic. If Starmie, again, could actually start hitting some freaking moves here, that would be great. I would be very happy about that. There we go. And for some reason... How does that work? I don't get it. Like, somebody said in the comments of the previous episode that... Hey, level 64 Starmie. Somebody said in the comments of the previous episode that Pokemon damage moves have like a minimum and maximum value. And therefore, they're not going to do the same damage every single turn. Like one turn it may do, for example, 50 damage. Next turn it may do 52 damage, which is really, really weird. I don't like how that works. Hey, there we go. Just take now, hit him on top and one hit there. Because it makes it hard to predict certain things. Like, uh, if you guys didn't catch it in the previous episode, I think it was Crobat, and I think it was Sludge Bomb. Either Sludge Bomb or Shadow Ball. It did, again, just using rough numbers here, it did 80 damage the first turn. And I'm like, okay, 80 damage. I can live one more of those, and, you know, I'll be fine, right? And then the next turn, it did, like, 82 damage and actually knocked me out. I'm like, well, what the heck? Since when's that a mechanic? But apparently, it's always been a mechanic. It's just one of those things that doesn't happen that often. And when it does happen, you just kind of rarely notice it, which is actually kind of frustrating. String. So we're going to be keeping Typhlosion out here yet again. Um, I'm definitely, I definitely, one of the reasons why I'm doing this kind of a build, how I found out about Typhlosion being the key to our victory here in the Elite Four, is because somebody said yesterday that I need to use my Pokemon better. There's more to my team than just Starmie. And I really took that to heart. I'm like, huh. I mean, it's true. I was really using Starmie and Electabuzz heavily throughout my first couple runs of the Elite Four. And so I'm like, well, how can I incorporate the rest of the people on my team? Like, how can I get Typhlosion involved? How can I get Dragon Knight involved? How can I best utilize my entire team? And that's how I ended up figuring out this whole strategy, which is, again, just so freaking cool. Like, I'm so satisfied and so happy that this actually... Uh, ended up working out the way that it did. So the reason why we have Typhlosion here against Shininja, if guys don't know, is because Shininja has Wonder Guard, which is an ability that makes it so it cannot take damage unless that damage is super effective. So it's a bug ghost, therefore you basically need to have uh, things that are good against bug or ghost, and obviously fire is good against bug. So that's why we leave a Typhlosion here. Then it's going to swap, I believe, into Crobat, which is annoying. This is one of the, and by the way, this is one of those Pokemon that uh, I have no real perfect strategy again, so we can definitely try our best. Um, part of me wants to keep Typhlosion out here, because again, I've tried so many different things, it really doesn't matter what I do, it's going to be annoying regardless. All it's going to do is freaking keep putting me to sleep and confusing me. Um, I think we can try a Flamethrower, just to kind of weaken it. Yep, here comes the first Hypnosis. It's so freaking frustrating. Like, it will literally Shadow Ball Hypnosis, Shadow Ball Hypnosis, Shadow Ball Hypnosis, over and freaking over. It is... Oh, man. Okay, so right now we know for a fact it's not going to be using Hypnosis again. Let's get Electabuzz out. I think that might be our best bet because it is part flying. Therefore, a nice crispy Volt Tackle. Look at this! It puts you to sleep and then... It's next... By the way, its next move is always predetermined, right? Always predetermined. So, it used Hypnosis and then it was going to try using Confuse Ray on my already sleeping Typhlosion because that's how annoying this Crobat is. And you know for a fact I'm about to actually be confused and not just hit this Volt Tackle. Like, why would I actually hit the Volt Tackle? Here comes the Hypnosis again. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? It's like playing a mage in Hearthstone. It doesn't actually do anything. It just annoys you to death and makes you not want to play the game. That's all it does. <laughs> <sighs> and then watch this, right? So, I, 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 again, I know how all this freaking plays out. We're going to use the Poker Flute. And I'm going to wake up. He's going to use either Sludge sludge Bomb or Shadow Ball. Either or. And then he's going to drop another Hypnosis on me. And then I'm going to hit. And I'm going to wake him up. Then he's going to do another Sludge Bomb. Then another Hypnosis. And that's going to freaking just always be the cycle. Unless Electabuzz is actually faster. And that can actually get a move off here. But Crobat is very, very fast. So I don't know if that's actually going to work out for me. Let us find. Um, well, now I think because of the po yeah because of the poison, I have to use a full restore here, which is really annoying. Okay, we're gonna use one of our full restores just to get our hit points back. Get rid of the poison. I think it also gets rid of the confusion. I could be wrong about that. Hey, I went for another sludge bomb instead of trying to put me to sleep. Is he gonna get lucky again and poison me again? Of course it is. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? 
Oh, wait, no, it didn't. Okay, I'm sorry. That was just leftovers. I was looking at the hit points there. I saw, I was looking at my hit points trying to determine if I could take another hit or not. And I saw Electabuzz moving a little bit right there. And I'm like, well, I'm dead. And then it turns out he was moving because of leftovers. I'm sorry. My bad. All my bad. <laughs> and down goes Crobat. All right, so Crobat goes down. Uh, Electabuzz takes a little bit of damage, but that's okay. And Typhlosion uh, gets a little bit of experience, which is good. Now, Gengar should be coming out, if I recall correctly. Nope, Sableye. Okay, Sableye because Electabuzz is out. Gengar would come out if Typhlosion was out, I think. Okay, so Sableye, I'm... I think Sableye actually has Earthquake. I think it has Earthquake. I might be wrong. Hmm. Either way, I think we're faster than it, so let's just go ahead and drop a Volt Tackle on it. I thought about healing, but uh, this doesn't seem like a very good idea. We might be able to take it out in one hit. Oh! oh! My heart. My heart. Okay, it has Seismic Toss. Why with the one hit point? Why always with the one hit point? Hey, now you're paralyzed, though. That's actually pretty good for us, right? Okay, so now I think um, we can just put out Typhlosion. I think Typhlosion can take out Sableye pretty easily uh, with a couple of flamethrowers. That will also make him level up, so that'll be pretty good. Although Sableye may have Earthquake. I can't honestly remember. Oh, that did, oh that may have actually screwed it. No. Okay, it's gonna, it's gonna use a full restore because it was paralyzed and at relatively low health. I was wondering if that health value was just just high enough that the AI wouldn't want to actually heal it, but I guess it was just inside the range. Hey, look at that flamethrower go. And we get two of them in a row because uh, he used an item. Now, if somebody could also answer this read down in the comments. I don't think anyone's actually answered it so far. And it's something that's really, really confused me about this playthrough. Sometimes, when the opposing trainer uses an item, that means I get two turns in a row. Like, I get to use two moves in a row. And same thing's true for them. Like, if I use an item, sometimes they get to use two turns in a row. Why is that? Because it's not always the case. Does it go based off of speed? I think it goes. I think it is actually based off of speed, and that's what determines it. But there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Typhlosion grew to level 64. Here is stats, 205 hit points, decent special attack, decent special defense. Pretty good stuff there, right? Typhlosion is trying to learn Eruption. In one of my runs, where I was just like trying out different things, I just so happened to use Typhlosion more in that run than I did in the previous runs, and he ended up leveling up to 64. And at 64 here in this game, he learns Eruption, which is a really good fire move. It is a 100% accurate fire attack that does 150 damage by default, assuming, of course, you are at maximum HP. So, if you attack first, or if you're at max HP, this is a 100% accurate fire move that hits like a freaking truck. <laughs> and so, yeah, we're going to be replacing Fire Blast for that, because it does more damage than Fire Blast, it's more accurate than Fire Blast. Of course, it does not get used as much, because I only have five uses of it, and if my hit points are lower, it's going to do less damage, but still... It's better than Fire Blast, I think, in pretty much every situation, and therefore we are going to be using it. And that move, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the key to taking down Gary. Spoiler, it's going to be the key. Out comes Mistrebius. Now here's the thing, be sure to not use uh, Eruption whatsoever. Just keep on using Flamethrowers and save all five of those Eruptions for later on. But yeah, Typhlosion here is actually pretty good against Agatha, because all she has are these different... Uh, uh, ghost types, by and large, with the exception of Hypno. Hypno, again, is one of those annoying Pokemon that just I have no real answers for. But, um, all the other ghost Pokemon, Gengar, Mysterious, stuff like that. I mean, Typhlosion can flamethrower through pretty much all of them. <laughs> it's a pretty good special attack. They don't, they don't resist it whatsoever. It just, it, it's a good matchup for us, really. Now, here comes Hypno, who is not a good matchup for us. It's actually incredibly frustrating how bad of a matchup Hypno is. Um... Let's just go for a double edge, I think. I think that would do more damage than Flamethrower against the Hypno. I could be wrong, though. I just want to try and chunk down a little bit of its hit points. Now it's going to use a Calm Mind. That's fine. We have to swap out Typhlosion now, by the way, because otherwise Perish Song is going to hit. Well, then again... Hmm. I mean, technically, we could just try maybe a Flamethrower with Typhlosion, do a good amount of damage, and then have him faint here. Yeah, let's do it that way, because then I think we can actually save the Pokemon I'm swapping into from actually taking a hit from Hypno. Okay, so Flamethrower did roughly, roughly the same damage as uh, Double Edge did there against Hypno. 
So he's going to heal up a little bit. Typhlosion is going to go down, which is why it's actually kind of funny. He used uh, Hypnosis there instead of like an actual move. Which then again, I guess it doesn't really matter what move he would have used. Hypno or Typhlosion was going to go down this turn regardless because of the Parish Song. Hmm. Well, now I think we can send in Tauros, maybe. Tauros is not a great matchup against Hypno, but... I mean, it can try. <laughs> it can try. It does physical attacks. It's pretty fast as well. And, uh... Yeah, that's not going to take it down. I'll take down, like, half its remaining health, if I had to guess. Ooh, it actually took down a lot more, and it missed. There we go. But what's annoying, though, is because it's down there at that, that hit point value, it's going to... It's going to trigger a full restore, which is frustrating. Because, as you guys saw there, Tauros is not exactly great at taking down this Hypno. For some reason, this, this Hypno is just, like, so bulky. It's not weak to anything I have on my team whatsoever. Like, none of my moves are actually good against it in any way, shape, or form. And it can buff itself up pretty well with, uh, with things like Calm Mind and stuff like that. And, of course, it's also going to freaking put me asleep all the time with its Hypnosis. Which is frustrating. Ooh! Now, that one did a lot more damage than the first one. Now, because we've taken out the other Pokemon so easily... No, I think because... Uh, I was wondering if maybe it was going to trigger another full restore, but I think because of that heal there... Yeah, we're going to be good. All right, so there we go. Tauros took down Hypno. That was actually a lot, le a lot less annoying than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be much more difficult than that. And then the final Pokemon here, who is not a good matchup for Tauros whatsoever, is Gengar. Now, let's see here. What do I have in terms of Pokemon left? Typhlosion is down, and Electabuzz is down. We should probably actually revive one of them. Because, yeah. I, th I think we're just going to really need them in this situation. Because Starmie's weak to Gengar. In theory, he's weak to Gengar. I don't think Gengar actually has any ghost moves to use, which is what Starmie's actually weak to. But uh, I don't want to risk it. Don't want to risk it. We're just going to go ahead and... Heal up our boy Typhlosion here. Now, what's funny about poor Tauros here is he can't actually do anything. <laughs> well, actually, he can. I can technically use Blizzard against Gengar, and that would hit. That would technically hit. But uh, Earthquake would not because Gengar has Levitate. Uh, somebody said in the comments to just use uh, Earthquake against Gengar because Gengar is part poison. Therefore, you know, it'd be super effective against him. But keep in mind, Gengar has Levitate, right? Gengar is not affected by ground moves. So the poison typing is not exactly a bad typing for it. So, yeah, so Tauros' uh, normal moves don't affect its ghost type, and its Earthquake does not affect its Levitate ability. So, <laughs> really bad matchup for Tauros there, but that's fine. Uh, because Typhlosion here is more than capable of taking down Gengar. Like, no problemo here whatsoever. It's also hurt by a burn, and the Flamethrower is going to finish it off. There we go. So, down goes Agatha. Now, all we have left is Lance, and then after that, of course, Gary, the Pokemon League champion. Yes, I am something special. I know, I know. You win. I see with the old Duff C's in you now. I have nothing else to say. Run along now, child. All right, let's uh, do some Revivin here to our poor Electabuzz and our poor Tauros. <laughs> poor guys here. But uh, we're about to take on, of course, uh, your boy Lance and all of his scary dragon Pokemon. And, of course, Starmie is still going to be... Uh, Carrying us through this with her ice beams, but Dragonite is going to play a, is going to play a role in this as well, and all the Pokemon, believe it or not, are going to be playing a big role in the final battle. So, pretty excited, pretty excited. I really hope this doesn't mess up because what happens, guys? What actually happens if, for some reason, I have no idea what would cause it to happen? But what if something were to happen where I freaking fail against the Pokemon League champion again? I'd have to scrap this whole. I, I would probably have to honestly scrap this whole recording and just start over because I, I do not want to make you guys sit through another episode where I get through the Elite Four and then fail again. Now, to be fair, like, I think it's actually cool that the Elite Four is actually capable of us failing. I'm happy as well that um, my Pokemon are pretty underleveled in the grand scheme of things against all the Pokemon that we're going to be trying to take on. But there, eventually there becomes a point where you can't just have, like, five straight episodes where it's, okay, guys, attempt number eight at the Elite Four. I think we have it this time. <laughs> You know, eventually you just have to actually freaking be able to beat the Elite Four, but I think we're actually going to be able to do it today. I'm pretty confident in that. Alright, so out comes Salamence, which is just going to die to Starmie. Unless, of course, 
some shenanigans happen. So like I said earlier, there is like a minimum and maximum damage values of each one of these moves, and there have been times where for some reason Starmie has not been able to take out these Dragon Pokemon in one hit, and when that happens... It's actually kind of scary. <laughs> it's actually pretty scary because then the entire strategy gets thrown on top of it. It's like gets turned upside down. So let's hope here Dragonite goes down in one hit. It should. Nine times out of ten it will, but often sometimes it won't. Uh, and this is one of those times where it doesn't. But it gets frozen! Oh my goodness, the freaking luck here. The luck. I can't believe the luck here. So like I said, like nine times out of ten, Starmie will take out this Dragonite with one hit of its Ice Beam. But for some reason, this time around, it didn't. But we also got the 10% chance. Keep in mind, Ice Beam has a 10% chance of freezing the target. And we happen to get that. That is so lucky. Now, let's see if it actually works this time. Come on, Ice Beam. Don't you do me like this. Don't you do me like this, Ice Beam. Oh, that, see that time it did more damage. But it did not. No freaking way! This is actually absurd. Okay, this is karma. I hope you guys, if this were, if I were live streaming this on Twitch, I think that would be clipped. This is the universe paying me back right now, right? And the reason why is because in the previous episode, if you guys didn't catch it, we were facing Lance and it actually was what ultimately ended up screwing us. We were facing Lance and we had Golem out, right? And we had no more revives, so any Pokemon that, that went down was like a big, big problem for us, you know? And so Golem was out. He was super effective, like four times effective against the Pokemon he was facing. All he had to do was hit one Rock Slide, right? And Rock Slide is a pretty powerful rock move that has 90% accuracy. He missed it twice in a row. His 90% accurate move, he missed it twice in a row, and as a result, he went down, I think another Pokemon went down, and we ended up beating Lance, but we could not take on the Pokemon League Champion because we had no more revives, and we only had three active Pokemon, right? So that was frustrating. Uh, you guys found it hilarious. I'm happy you guys can take joy in my suffering, but uh, always going to withdraw Gyarados, okay. I'm happy you guys can take joy in my suffering, but man, that was very frustrating. And now today, we get two Frozens in a row. Like, how does that even happen? So, very rarely does Lance actually swap his Gyarados out uh, for Aerodactyl. But when he does, your best bet is just to swap out into a Starmie here. Because Starmie can take down Aerodactyl. Oh, unless we, unless we get crit there, for crying out loud. With one hit of Surf. And then after Aerodactyl goes down. By the way, I tested this. And this is something that, it's kind of like, I want to give you this to you guys as sort of a PSA. Electric moves can hit rock. I, I I always thought that rock was immune to electric, but it's not. It just resists it, right? So if you have an electric Pokemon against Naradactyl, who is rock and flying, feel free to use a Thunderbolt. That Thunderbolt, believe it or not, I tested. My Electabuzz's Thunderbolt will knock out that Aerodactyl in one hit, which I did not know was a thing. It actually blew my mind to figure that out, but that's actually true. It will. So just something to bear in mind. But your best bet, oftentimes, is, or for me anyway, is to swap into Starmie there because Aerodactyl's going to use Rock Throw and you don't want to have Rock Attacks being used against Electric Pokemon. So, uh, something to bear in mind there. Let's go ahead and drop a Moo Moo Milk on our boy slash girl slash Starfish Starmie. Because, again, uh, Gyarados here can't actually do anything. And just like in the previous episode, I think we're going to speed up this part because... Really quickly, for those who don't know, Gyarados' only move that he can attack with to do damage is Earthquake. And Earthquake does not affect Dragonite, therefore, there's nothing this Gyarados can actually do to Dragonite. So, therefore, we're just going to speed this up because there's no way, no possible way that Dragonite can actually go down. So, we're just going to... And there we go. We're just going to speed past that because it just would have taken forever. <laughs> Alright, so now that that's done, uh, so he's going to send out his Dragonite. And just for fun, I want a Dragonite v. Dragonite battle. If you guys don't know, Dragon is good against Dragon. So Outrage here is going to be super effective against the opposing Dragonite. We're going to see if I... Ooh! Oh, I thought it was going to be a crit. I didn't think it was going to do that much damage. Now, does this Dragonite have leftovers? Oh, it's got a berry of some kind. Okay. That restores its health. <gasps> that restored its health. It's going to go down. Right? Unless I'm paralyzed and can't move, my Dragonites can't beat this Dragonite, even though it's underleveled. No! Dragonite! That would have been so cool. 
Now, now I can try to use another one, but now I'm about to be confused and paralyzed. It might be in our best interest to just swap Dragonite out at this point. The, par the paralysis kind of screwed us here. We did get lucky. Um, Outrage attacks between two and three times, and at the end of it, uh, your Pokemon gets confused. We happen to get three straight Outrages that time, which is kind of lucky. Yeah, yeah, Dragonite buffing itself up with the, dra with the Dragon Dance, increasing its physical attack and its speed. And now I'm paralyzed and can't move. Twice in a row that happened. My Dragonite should have taken out his Dragonite twice now, but no. Um, that... Nah, Double Edge is probably... It's gonna take me... Oh, I thought that was gonna take me out, to be perfectly honest. <gasps> Even after all that, my Dragonite still beat his Dragonite. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Or should I say our Dragonite? <laughs> because you guys stuck with me throughout all that painful, painful leveling. <gasps> that was rough. The leveling of Dragonite was... Of Dragonair, rather, was pretty tough. That was pretty tough. Was not a big fan of that. Um, but I think, I think it paid off in the end. Dragonite's a pretty good Pokemon. I've never, never raised a Dragonite before either, so that's pretty cool as well. Uh, one Surf here should take down Charizard, I would hope anyway. And it's also, I think, going to take Starmie up to level 65. Hey, there we go. Alright, down goes Charizard. And up to level 65 goes Starmie, who now has 200 speed. Very nice. And down goes Leap 4 Lance. Alright, so like I said earlier, do not walk into the next room before you heal up all of your Pokemon. I can't believe you- I still can't believe my dragons lost to you, Nero. You are now the Pokemon League Champion. Or, you would have been, but you have one more challenge left. There is one more trainer to face. His name is... Gary. He beat the Elite Four before you. He's the real Pokemon League Champion. That freaking Gary, man. He's always just one step ahead. Did any Pokemon faint there? Yeah, Dragonite did. Alright, so here is where we make sure we are completely and 110% ready to go for this battle here. So we have a 63 Dragonite, 64 Electabuzz, 64 Typhlosion, 63 Golem, 63 Tauros, and 65 Starmie. I mean, I think Starmie in the Elite Four is always going to be one level ahead of the other Pokemon because they're, half the Pokemon League is weak to Starmie, it seems like. Um, okay, let's see. We have 12 Moo Moo Milk. Let's actually make, let's make sure Starmie's all the way up in, in terms of hit points, just to be safe. Um, how are we in terms of moves? I'm going to use my ethers and stuff right now, I think, as well, uh, depending if we actually need them or not. So Starmie has uh, six uses of Ice Beam and six uses of Psychic. Tauros is fine. Golem has only used one move so far, but he's going to be useful in this next battle, believe me. We should maybe um, restore Flamethrower. I think we're good on Bolt Tackles. Okay, so we're, I mean, why even bother saving this kind of stuff, right? Let's just go ahead and drop, I have all these ethers anyway. Let's go ahead and uh, restore Volt Tackle there for Electabuzz. Let's go ahead and restore both Psychic as well as Ice Beam for Starmie, just to make sure that it has all of them in case we need them. I actually don't think Starmie's going to play a bigger role in this battle whatsoever, um, but we're going to be keeping it, we're going to be... Uh, just making sure we have all our moves possible. I think that's pretty much all we need to do, right? Okay, so we're going to be leading things off here with Typhlosion. Typhlosion is the key to this battle. I'm actually very nervous about this. If I fail this again, I'm going to be so frustrated. <laughs> so frustrated. But either way, Typhlosion is leading the way. Hey, Nero! I was looking forward to seeing you. My rival should be strong to keep me sharp. While working on my Pokedex, I looked all over for Pokemon. Not only that, I assembled teams that would beat any Pokemon type, and now I'm the Pokemon League champion. Nero, do you know what that means? I'll tell you, I'm the most powerful trainer in the world. We'll see about that, Gary! Oh man, I'm nervous about this. <laughs> It's so frustrating to spend like half an hour or more getting up to a getting up to a point where you may actually fail and have to start over again. Like it's very, very frustrating. Alright, so he's gonna be leading here with Heracross. And that is why we're leading with Typhlosion. Heracross is fighting slash bug, therefore weak to fire. But beforehand, before my Typhlosion was at was ever um was level 64 and learned eruption, 
My Flamethrower was not enough to take out Heracross, and Heracross would use Earthquake and take out my Typhlosion, which was super freaking frustrating, right? And so Typhlosion would go down, I was pretty much screwed. The only time I could actually take out Heracross in one hit was if I used Fire Blast, and Fire Blast, if you guys don't know, has 85% accuracy. So I was basically doing these half hour long runs to get all the way up to take on Gary, and then I had to basically flip a coin. If I didn't win that 85% coin flip, I lost. Right? And that was especially true when he sent out this Pokemon, which is Metagross, which is a bug psychic, I think? Right? In the same situation, I could not kill this thing without Fire Blast actually hitting. And again, it was an 85% accurate move. So now that I have Eruption, which does 150 damage, plus Stab, plus everything else, and guaranteed to hit take him out in one hit. By the way, that freaking thing is obnoxiously powerful. Like, so freaking good. He buffs himself up like crazy. He has Meteor Smash, or Meteor Mash, whatever it's called. He also has Earthquake. Like, he just destroys my whole team. The only Pokemon that could possibly stand to fight him was Typhlosion, and he would kill Typhlosion because Typhlosion could not one-hit him, right? But now that that happened, we're pretty much good to go. Now out comes Jinx, right? Who is part Ice? Who is part Ice? Oh, it used Calm Mind, which is going to raise up its special defense. That's fine. That's fine. We may actually still be good here. It's going to raise up its special defense, but it is an ice type, and it is taking damage from an eruption right here. And we're going to see how that's going to hurt it. It may actually take it out in one hit, but it might not because the Calm Mind may actually have buffed it up to the point where it can live through one of these eruptions. Okay, so it lived through an eruption, which is fine. Now it's going to go for a full restore. We're going to try another eruption. We're just going to keep the pressure up here. And I believe... See, here's this is why I asked you guys that question earlier, right? I'm very confused about how this works. He just used an item. I just used a move after that. In theory, I should get to do another move because he used an item, right? But that's not always the case. See, right there, he gets to go again. And I don't know why that's the case. I don't know why. It's, is it because Jinx is so much faster than Typhlosion? I don't know. That may very well actually be the case. I'm, I, I'm not 100% sure. That's why I asked down there in the comments for you guys to answer that for me. I wish I would get a crit with uh, Eruption right here just to actually take out this freaking thing. I think we're out of Eruptions now, technically. We can try a Flamethrower, but now it's going to drop a Psycho Boost on us, which really sucks because that's going to take out Typhlosion pretty much in one hit. Um, it just does way too much damage for Typhlosion not to go down there. It's going to lower uh, Jinx's Special Offense, or Special Attack, rather, but it's going to go away because it has a White Herb on it, which is annoying. But... Okay, so now, we have some options here. Never send out Dragonite. Never, ever send out Dragonite in this situation. It will just die a painful, painful death. Um, because it's part ice, if you guys don't know. I think the best option here, honestly, is to send out Electabuzz. And have Electabuzz just go whole hog with a Volt Tackle. And hope that it's actually faster than this Jinx. Which you would think it would be, but Jinx is such a higher level. Hey, there we go. Volt Tackle. Down goes Jinx. At least I hope down goes Jinx. I can't imagine a situation where this does not take... Are you kidding me? There's no way! What? One hit point? That actually happened? That actually happened? That's a thing that just happened. I can't believe that. We're probably going to lose this now. We are probably going to lose this now because Jinx has never actually given me this much trouble before. But then again... Jinx, he's already used two full restores on Jinx. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Oh, now it's using Ice Beams. It's not going to heal anymore. The reason why I was like so frustrated right there is because, okay, I wish that Ice Beam wasn't doing so much damage. But the reason why I was so frustrated there is because I thought that uh, he was going to heal up Jinx. But he can't. He's already used two full restores on it. Like, I don't think he has any more full restores to go. <gasps> so that Jinx is down. That's the majority of the... That's the hardest part, I think, of this entire battle. Oh, I couldn't believe that, man. Now, this is actually the best part of the entire battle, at least in my opinion, is when Ampharos comes out, right? Because we have a Pokemon that Ampharos just can't really do anything against. <laughs> and that Pokemon is Golem. And so what we do while Golem is here is we can actually take the time to use revives and heal up our Pokemon and do stuff like that. So it's going to be raising its attack. It's going to be getting itself all big, buff, and scary, which eventually it will actually be able to take out Golem. But for right now, anyway, we can use this, we can use this time to revive up Typhlosion. And then heal up Typhlosion, because we're going to be needing that Typhlosion here, here in a moment. 
And of course, it's going to be using substitutes, which is frustrating, but... Okay, uh... Da -da 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 -da. Where, where, well, I was already hovering over it, and I'm like... <laughs> seeing that right in front of me. It's like, you ever have, like, your sunglasses on your head, and you're like, where'd my sunglasses go? That was me trying to find movement milk right there. <laughs> what the heck, man? How can I not find that? It's right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep raising up all your special attack while hiding behind your substitute. I'm fine with that, man. I'm fine with it, because I'm just going to keep on healing every Pokemon on my team here. We are not losing today, Gary. Gonna drop that Fire Punch on me. I get it. Now look at that. Look how much he buffed up his Fire Punch to the point where it can actually take out a Golem in two hits. If that's not crazy, I don't know what is. Alright, so now, um... Hmm. I guess we could just try dropping an Earthquake here, but that Fire Punch may actually knock me out. I can see it actually, like, critting or just doing more damage than it should and then just knocking me out. Alright, so the Subsu took the damage for Ampharos, which is annoying. Basically, every every Pokemon in the Pokemon League is just annoying. Like, they don't actually do things. They just, like, stall you in one way or another. Okay, so we're going to use a full Restore here on the Golem, I think. I mean, Ampharos is just going to use another Substitute anyway, so you might as well, right? And I've got, I, I've got one more of these anyway. Full Restore, if you guys don't know, fully restores uh, your Pokemon by giving you all your hit points back and curing, like, Paralysis or... Uh, sleep or, you know, poison, anything like that. Goodness gracious, that's doing a lot of damage. I think that was the maximum damage that I can do, so I'm going to be able to live through another one of them uh, if it goes for one. And now I can drop an Earthquake. Yes, yeah, so I should be able to live this, especially with the leftovers helping me out. Okay. And now I drop an Earthquake, which probably isn't going to knock it out, to be perfectly honest, just because it's got seven levels on me. But... Ooh, close. No cigar, though. Hmm. So he's about to do a fire punch, right? Like, we pretty much know that's what Ampharos is going to be doing here. If we know Ampharos is doing a fire punch, we could swap into Typhlosion. And then have Typhlosion soak the fire punch. And then drop, like, a flamethrower or something on Ampharos to take out the remaining hit points. Oh, no, he's going to go for a full restore. How many full restores does this guy got? <laughs> That's the big question here. Um, I think we have to go with like physical attacks here, like double edge, right? Okay, that did not, that did not do nearly as much damage as I was hoping it would do. And I got paralyzed due to the static. And it's going to drop some thunderbolts on me. That's going to hurt. Okay, so yeah, I think we're going to really need to have Golem take out this Ampharos. I think I took one too many turns letting Ampharos set up here, which is not very good. Um, well, we can try Electabuzz against it, but that's not a great matchup for us, honestly. It's Electric v. Electric. It may have some sort of annoying move like Earthquake, although I doubt it. Let's see. It's got, it's got Ice Punch, Thunderbolt, Substitute, and then the one that buffs. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's not going to be able to do anything, I don't think, to, elect, uh, to Electabuzz. Its damage may just be good enough to take it out, though. Which is kind of scary. Um, it's Fire Punch is what we're actually worried about right now. Ooh, look at Psychic go. Oh, a crit on Psychic. That was actually really good for us. Oh, you're too weak to make a substitute, are you? Oh, no. Are you actually going to have to battle instead of hiding behind a doll? Oh. And now we drop a Psychic on it. Down goes Ampharos. There we go. Nice and easy, boys. Nice and easy. And out comes Houndoom. Okay, that's a uh, not a great matchup for me, but it's a good, it's a better matchup for our boy Tauros. What are you gonna do? Oh, we're going to intimidate it. We're gonna lower down that attack, which is pretty good. It's gonna do a Willow. Oh, that's actually annoying. Willow Wisp, if you guys don't know, uh, burns 100% of the time, and burns lower your physical attack by 50%. Therefore, my Earthquake is not going to be able to knock out this Houndoom, because it's going to do half the damage that it normally does. Now it's going to drop a Fire Blast on me, a 75 or an 85% accurate move. He happened to hit his first try. Oh, which almost knocked me out. Can I hit an Earthquake? Oh, there we go. Tauros was faster. That was a risky play right there, because honestly, I thought Houndoom was going to be a little bit faster. But I think Earthquake... Oh, Earthquake did not take out Houndoom in one hit. That's interesting. I'm pretty positive in my test runs that it did take out Houndoom in one hit. 
Uh, that's, that's a little bit on the concerning side, to be perfectly honest. But, uh... Okay, so what we do here, what we do here, what we do here... Um, we can send out Starmie. Who will pretty easily be able to take out this Houndoom. But the final Pokemon that Gary has is not exactly a great matchup for Starmie. But I'm very happy to see it regardless. Are you guys ready? Are you ready for the final Pokemon? <gasps> Venusaur. I do have Ice Beam I can use against Venusaur, though I'm not sure it's going to take it out in one hit. I know Typhlosion's Flamethrower can, but I don't think Ice Beam can. Oh, yeah, it only took down half its hit points. Here comes a friend's... <laughs> oh, man, it missed Frenzy Plant, which would have easily taken me out. And now, because of the leftovers, though, I'm only, I, he's got, like, one hit point left. Yep. See, that's what I'm saying. You can eyeball this kind of... He missed two of them in a row? This is justice right here. This is justice for the previous episode, and I love it. Now, here comes the full restore. That's to be expected. I'm playing with fire here. I should really just revive Typhlosion and win the game. But we can also get Dragonite out here as well, I think. If, if Starmie goes down, we can get Dragonite out. Have Dragonite drop an Aerial Ace, and I should be that. Oh, we get another Ace Beam, which, again, is going to drop him down to, uh, like, two hit points this time instead of just one. Nope, actually two. Why that? See, that's what I'm talking about with the minimum and maximum damage values. They make no sense sometimes. It's hard to... I hate... I wish they were consistent 100% of the time. Like, this ma this move did this much damage every time he used it in this matchup. Like, I wish there wasn't minimum and maximum going on. But regardless, ladies and gentlemen, Starmie just gained 3,030 experience points. And player defeated champion Gary. No, that can't be! You beat me at my best! After all that work to become the league champ, my reign is over already? It's not fair! And we got $7,200 for winning. Aw, oh, it's so good. Why? Why did I lose? I never made any mistakes racing my Pokemon. I did plenty of them. In fact, uh, Ditto is the biggest one. <laughs> Darn it, you're the new Pokemon League champion. Although I don't like to admit it. Nero! Ooh, Professor Oak is here. With that awesome music. So, you've won! Sincerely, congratulations! You're the new Pokemon League champion! You've grown up so much since you first left- <laughs> So, I guess the guy that made this mod was not able to... Basically, change up Oak's dialogue. I guess if- I guess... Uh, Elekid? Replaced Charmander? In this mod? Because it's saying that I left Pallet Town with Charmander. So does that mean Jinx replaced Squirtle? And then, of course, um, um, the third Pokemon. What was his name? What was that little Pokemon? Magby. So Mag Wait, Magby replaced Bulbasaur? Either way, that's really weird. I, I, you've grown up so much since you first left with Charmander to work on the Pokedex. Nero, you have come of age. I'm, I'm still 10 years old. Gary, I'm disappointed in you. I came when I heard you'd beaten the Elite Four, but when I got here, you had already lost. Gary, do you understand why you lost? You've forgotten to treat your Pokemon with love and trust. Without them, you will never become champ again. Actually, he will. He can have my reign as Pokemon champ, because I'm not going to stay here and do battles all day. I have to head over to the, the what are they called, the Sevi Islands or something like that? I'm, I'm leaving here. I'm going on vacation. <laughs> Nero, you understand that your victory was not just your own doing. The bond you share with your Pokemon is marvelous. Nero, come with me. Oh, this is the coolest part. This is the big payoff at the end of the game. I love it. Oh, look at the reflection on the floor. So nice, so shiny. Ahem. Congratulations, Nero. This floor is a Pokemon Hall of Fame. The Pokemon League champions are honored for their exploits here. Their Pokemon are also recorded in the Hall of Fame. Nero, why do they keep like, exclaiming my name? Like, I'm right here. We're the only people in the room. <laughs> You've worked hard to become the new League champion. Congratulations, Nero. You and your Pokemon are Hall of Famers.